we're going to be reading some more Reddit stories today. My name is Joni. However, before we get started, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video, subscribe to my channel, and perhaps even leave a comment below. These few clicks would have a big impact on this channel's future and truly honor the work I put in every day. And now, let's get started without further ado. Let's investigate today's stories to see what transpired. Due to adultery, my 29-year-old male ex-wife and I recently got divorced. When my wife and I first met, it was at a housewarming celebration hosted by a mutual acquaintance, and we clicked right away. She was smart and kind, and my feelings for her grew as we learned more about one another. We had several dates, dated for two years, and got married. Just like in every other love story, I wouldn't have believed a psychic if they had said that my wife would cheat on me in the future. Everywhere we went, my wife and I would be the kind of couple you would see holding hands and dressing alike. She loved walking on the ground I did, and we were usually on top of each other. We had a great and enjoyable marriage and did a lot of exploring together. My first real love was my wife. In high school and college, I was in relationships, but they weren't committed. I was the quiet kid growing up and the awkward adult who struggled to maintain relationships. However, things were really simple with my wife. We got along well and had a seamless relationship. My spouse was employed at a ladies' beauty business as a hairdresser, and I was employed at a construction company. We were delighted with what we had acquired and looked forward to a straightforward, happy life together. I never suspected my wife of cheating throughout the two years we were married. When I realized she was having an affair, it was almost like a dream. My spouse enjoyed spending time with her friends on a weekly basis. They would frequently get together for a Friday night out, plan a picnic on Saturday, or just hang around at a bar. I didn't have as many friends as my wife did, and I wasn't as gregarious as she was, but I was close to one of my co-workers from work, who was practically my best friend. A few indicators made me suspect my wife of cheating on me before I really discovered it. For instance, my wife suddenly became quiet, she used to be outgoing and would always tell me the newest gossip when she got home. I had to ask her questions before she would speak, so our interactions were strained. Every time we chatted, she gave me the impression that she was doing me a favor and I detested that. She began to gripe in the bedroom, saying that I enjoyed intimacy too much and that having intimate relationships wasn't the point of life. She would tell me she wasn't in the mood if she wasn't whining about it. Our excuses were always one after the other. When this first started, I assumed that her actions were a result of her extreme work stress, which she was indirectly venting on me. I didn't act right away because I thought she might change her mind. There was even a moment when I started to question myself because I felt like the issue was with me. I observed my tone of voice, my interactions with her, and even my behavior around her. Despite my inherent tendency toward dominance, I made a conscious effort to speak to her as a wife, always monitoring my tone. At one point, she also complained that I was becoming boring and that I had stopped doing the things we used to do while we were dating, so I even went so far as to take her out to fancy dinners. I did everything I could to reignite our love and return to the blissful pair we once were, but to no avail. I quit since she didn't seem to appreciate anything I did. I began observing her body language more intently when I stopped. She used to push me with her elbow and seem annoyed if I tried to hug her from behind, for instance. That occurred three times or more before I realized something wasn't right. She would always wear nice clothes when she expressed her want to go out with her pals. I noticed in the interim. It's not as though she didn't previously dress nicely. She appeared more eager and took longer to style her hair and apply cosmetics. Actually, I had a suspicion that she was seeing someone do of her changes, and I had intended to confront her as soon as I had evidence. I was not the type of man to put off planning a foolish retaliation for 10 days or 4 eternities. I'd give her a lesson, and I had major anger management problems before I addressed her. One weekend, before we even discussed getting even, I was sitting at home wondering how I could find out if my wife was cheating on me. Our relationship had deteriorated to the point that we were practically living together as roommates, only communicating when it was really necessary. Before she departed, I watched my wife get ready, do her hair, and apply cosmetics. She walked out after saying she was going out with the females. My gut told me she was lying for some reason. I don't know why, but I thought she was lying so much that I contacted one of her buddies after she was gone and said I needed to talk to my wife. She wasn't answering my calls despite my claims that I continued phoning her phone. Her friend didn't have any plans to meet with my wife that weekend and was perplexed when I told her everything. She lived across the country. Additionally, 
Her friend mentioned that they will make an announcement on their secret WhatsApp group chat before the hanging out. She was certain that my wife wasn't hanging around with the other girls, but there was no announcement. As soon as I heard this, I knew she had to be somewhere else or had gone to be with her lover. Finding her didn't even concern me because I knew I could follow her using GPS. I got out of the house without wasting any time and followed her GPS, which took me to a football stadium. I knew my wife was there since I saw her car parked outside. It was simpler to find her because there weren't many people in the stadium. I was taken aback to see her with her younger sister's high school football coach, as she was cuddling up to him as they were kissing and laughing. I was so enraged by the image alone that I walked over to her and her AP, pulled out my phone, and began filming the video because I wanted her to know that I had seen her. I even pretended to be speaking to her parents in the video as I approached them, letting them know what a terrible daughter they had raised. My wife turned to face me as soon as she heard me speak, and her face went white. I immediately attacked the football coach after she called my name and asked me what I was doing there. She was such a moron. I wasn't thinking clearly at the time. I pounded the shit out of him because I was so furious. But happily, other individuals noticed us and helped to keep us apart. My spouse was unsure about whether to give up or beg. She couldn't even speak as she just stood there in shock at me. Even though I was upset, I tried to hold it in until I got home. I grieved a little when I arrived home and spent a long time clearing our lawn of her belongings. Her folks were really upset and disappointed with her after I sent them the video I had made. Because she could not believe my wife would have an affair with her football coach, her sister was the one who was most disappointed. That day, my spouse did not return home. Nevertheless, the following day, she persistently knocked on my door, pleading with me to open it so we could speak. If she didn't leave my property, I threatened to call the authorities, so I did just that when she refused to leave. They had to take her away since she even acted aggressively and resisted them. A few days later, my wife texted me using a new Facebook account, according to the messages I received from Facebook. She begged me to accept her back and give her the opportunity to explain everything, but I had disabled her previous Facebook account. She said that because I was usually so exhausted after work that I didn't give her the attention she needed in a timely manner which encouraged her to look for attention elsewhere. She said that the only reason she was with him was because of how he made her feel, and that she didn't love her AP as much as she loved me. That made me a little sad, but it didn't take away from the fact that she had cheated on me and betrayed me. She begged me to give her another chance and not make a decision I would later regret when I told her we were divorcing. How audacious of her. After a protracted legal battle, her parents disinherited her, and we were divorced. On her partner in the affair, her parents had denounced him to the school. The school had had enough of her constantly receiving complaints from different parents on the same issue, so he was fired. Even though I moved on from this long ago, it still aches. I've made the decision to redirect my suffering and concentrate on something more worthwhile. I don't have time for winning anymore, and I don't think I will in the near future music. Let's go on to the second tale now. My ex-wife cheated on me, which is why I want to tell my tale here. I had assumed we would be together for eternity. From our first year of college, my wife and I were in love. Our love tale started when we first met as college freshmen. My wife and I got married two years after I graduated from college and secured well-paying jobs. Particularly with her, we had always looked forward to being married. We had a little wedding and began a new chapter in our lives because she was excited to wear a wedding band and a lovely gown. We had separate classes in college, so it seemed sense that we worked in various fields. While my wife worked in the corporate world, I was employed as an electrician. We were at ease with one other, and she worked as a business consultant. Together with equal bill, splitting, we also shared responsibility. I made sure to assist whenever I could because I wasn't the type of man to leave all the housework to her. We worked on a strategy to make life easier because I knew she was always tired when she got home from work. As we were all still residents of the same state where our colleges were located, what we did was organize get-togethers or hangouts as a way to maintain our friendship. We planned it once every three to four months instead of doing it every day. In most cases, we would even postpone it until the end of the year to give ourselves ample time to get ready. We were just catching up and trying to help each other out however we could, so it was never anything major. We started doing this the year after we graduated from college, and we kept doing it even after we got married. People would frequently miss our hangouts because they lived in a foreign nation, were constantly preoccupied at work, or were in another state. 
I didn't like this one person in particular when my wife and I were still in college. He had a history with my wife before I met her, and he was a proud man. I didn't like him because any time he was around, I always felt like I was in a competition with him to earn my wife's attention. Although it may sound insecure, I had to ask my wife to choose between our relationship and him and she chose me. I requested her to sever all contact with him and stop talking to him once she picked me and she complied. After nearly three years of marriage, I observed a change in my wife's behavior around our third anniversary. She appeared less concerned about what was happening to me, but she wasn't frigid either. We used to be really close, and we gossiped about everything until I noticed her changes. But I couldn't help but notice that she had altered. I never considered the possibility that she might be unfaithful to me, even after she began acting differently. I assumed it was just one of her violent mood swings and that, in due course, she would revert to her typical self. One day, after getting home from work and having some downtime, I decided to use our home computer to access my Facebook account. I was addicted to social media, so I didn't have the Facebook app on my laptop or personal phone. The only way I could continue to be productive was to uninstall the apps and reinstall them on our home computer. I was limited to using social media just during my free time. Actually, my spouse and I had a little productivity rule that said we could only use the home computer to access social media sites like Facebook and Instagram. That fateful day, I found my wife's account was still active just as I was ready to enter into my own on the computer. At first, all I wanted to do was log out on her behalf, but I couldn't help but be curious. I decided to quickly glance over the people she had been chatting to and the types of conversations they were having because she had a lot of unread messages. I was shocked to learn that my spouse was speaking with the same college acquaintance she had a brief affair with before to our meeting. When I saw the flirtatious exchange between my wife and this person that she knew I didn't like, I was taken aback. They had been dating for a week, and as I followed their conversation, I learned that she was even discussing traveling to his apartment later in the week to catch up and complete the scene they had left off. Everything seemed like a joke to me at that very moment. I was reading their chat and giggling in shock. While I waited for my wife to revert to her previous behavior, I found it extremely hard to accept that she had been unfaithful to me for months. I spent many minutes considering every reason my wife could have cheated on me before realizing there was simply no justification for her to betray my confidence in such a way. I even snapped images of their chat with my phone since I was so furious. I changed her Facebook password because I wanted to make up for the anguish she caused me and it was easy for me to do so because her email was open on the computer. Following that, I uploaded the images of their chat on her Facebook page, wrote a post claiming to be my wife, and sent to the world that I ruined our marriage by having an affair on my wonderful husband. I then exited her account and proceeded to her room to pack my belongings. Later that evening, when she got home, she came to see me while I was sipping wine and talking about how some of our mutual Facebook friends had called her regarding a post she had written. She said that post had to have been posted by someone breaking into her account in order to destroy her marriage. She even attempted to get in, but realized her account had been hacked when she was unable to get the right password. When she was talking, I remained silent, watching her and listening to her complaints. After I'd had my fill of alcohol, I told her that I suspected she was seeing someone else while we were still in college, but she denied it. She started crying and claimed, I believed a stranger's post online and knock her to demonstrate how manipulative she was. She was astonished to see me respond that way and I had no idea when I started laughing. I informed her I wrote the post and voiced my dissatisfaction in her, since I couldn't keep pretending everything was fine. I spoke with her for a while before going into her room to pack and leaving. She called me more after I left, saying I was confusing things and that she would clarify, but I never gave her the chance. I didn't answer her calls or return them for weeks. In addition to being devastated, I began drinking, and her adultery made it difficult for me to stop for a very long period. I will not lie, I was devastated by my wife's treachery. I'm not sure how folks can be duped and then move on as if it never happened. I attempted to accomplish it, but the more I struggled, the more emotionally unstable I became. She went so far as to say that I shouldn't allow her small transgression destroy our future together and that she still loved me. I knew I couldn't be with her, even if I still loved her. After our divorce, I went on with my life. The fact that she was so ashamed and that her friends all saw the kind of person she was and even passed judgment on her still makes me feel satisfied. Every time I think back on how she fooled me, all I can do is wish she had the worst life possible. 
If my friends hadn't been there to console me and offer some common sense, I could have taken her back and decided not to tell the story. However, her AP ended their relationship because he felt more at ease with their liaison during her marriage. I've moved on, but at the moment, I can only continue to love my mother and my sisters because I'm so terrified of women. I've discovered the hard way that genuine affection and loyalty are only found in the company of dogs or cats. 